So then I would say um, we're up to, um, you know, narrowing down on like some interesting data context that you want to um, uh, uh, get in. And I will have to modify my, um, you know, breakout session thing a little bit because um, you indicated that breakout sessions aren't really the thing that you, you want to do, but um, in turn, we can just do it, um, do it here. What I plan to do now in the next, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes is to gather more ideas and kind of get you started searching for groups. And what, um, what I think is important is to, to look for stuff in uh, you know, certain domains. And the way I think this should go is, um, that we start generating like issues that you yourself consider important. And I think we started having a Google doc, but that Google doc needs to be um, expanded um, uh, along, along a couple of themes, all right? And um, what I'd like you to do is um, think about topics that like from a societal perspective, business perspective, or let's say new emerging phenomena perspective, spark your interest. And um, I think what we're gonna do now is you're still gonna use the chat right now because you said you don't like breakout groups and you'll give me, um, you'll give me some of those um, topics and I'm trying to structure them a little bit and um, we're gonna have a discussion on what's interesting about it. Um, and um, I try to give you certain ideas on how to find good websites or APIs that inform this context, all right? So, and I'd like to kickstart actually um, this discussion with um, Twitch actually. So um, you all were kind of into Twitch this morning. So I wanna know what is it actually that interests you about Twitch? Why should it be monitored? Why is it like worth collecting data from it? So unmute yourself and let me know why Twitch is maybe an interesting site um, to take a look at. Yeah, that's good. Uh, it's already coming in, Wouter. I'm actually opening, um, I'm opening this doc, which I had last time. Where is it, John? I'm in the wrong account. Let's, let's, um, does anybody still have that link where we had our brainstorm? This should be there, right? Today, earlier this week. Initial ideas, which is great. Got it. I'm opening up the doc to take some notes. All right, about her. Tell me more about that question. Can you maybe elaborate on that question? To whom is it interesting? To which stakeholders is it interesting? What could happen, right? So you're watching advertising and then. What could happen? We need to think about what kind of behavior we want to capture. So if you're watching advertisements, what do you do? Why is this an important question? One like potential motivation is like when should like streamers show advertisements? Should they show should they show advertisements at all? What are other things that that are interesting around that Twitch context? Text, right? We're gonna gather text. This is just a brainstorm, right? But I want you to be a little more like um, yeah, like open and not just zooming in on one research question, but trying to develop a research question or research context, actually. You don't need one research question. It's about more about the research context. Gather text is important. Okay, that's interesting. So actually that's broadening up the scope. So what products are being advertised typically on, on, on Twitch? Compare streamers. 
Very interesting. Um, yeah, that's a good one. So I'm actually going out of this um, mode just a little bit and I try to try to restructure it a little bit, right? Because the variables that we want to capture are, you know, streamer names, donations, um, text of the chat, um, ads, timing of ads. Yeah, losing viewers. So we want um, live count of viewership, subscribers. So let me call these meta characteristics of a stream. Live count, subs. Live characteristics of the chat. So what we maybe want is text of the chat, but maybe we want the per username. Usernames that put something. Aren't Edson just mentioned in the videos? How can you get data in that way? Yeah, exactly. Very good. I don't have a clue, right? Are they mentioned in the videos? Well, sometimes, right, you get an you get a video shown in between, right? So how can we identify that? Is it tagged with ads? So when I start watching, I don't know what I'm watching. So probably, I don't know. Okay, let me close that one. Um, I don't know. What's your experience here with ads? Are they actually identified? Maybe we don't really even want to do ads, right? It could be uh, anything else. I feel like the ads shown on Twitch are obtainable to influence ads and stream aren't. Okay, so that actually requires you to take a look at it. Like, you know, what happens when you when you watch an ad? Is that somewhere tagged? Is there like an ad item somewhere? Something worth exploring. So let's zoom out a little bit here because one of the fallacies, or actually donations, you get this, but channel streamer uh, names, which lists to focus on which streamers to capture is maybe something. This is maybe something that you guys need to take a look at whether this is actually revealed. But let us zoom in. What is so interesting about um, about Twitch as a platform? Sometimes the fallacy of like thinking about scraping is that you just use the most natural thing because you are a user of that platform anyways. But let's zoom out. Like, are there other situations in which you are watching somebody, you know, perform? and uh, people are commenting about it, right? What are other platforms similar to Twitch where stuff like this happens? You get it on YouTube too, too right? Yeah, exactly. What are other ones? Facebook, yeah. Facebook is not the most open platform, but um, Instagram, yeah, fine. But here you go, right? So let's broaden up. You've just mentioned again, the superstar platforms. Let's try to go a little like, you know, small scale. Uh, what are like niche platforms that only address certain audiences? Good reads, eh. but um, do they have videos and chats, live chats when you're reading a book? Uh -huh. Okay, good. So let's do not good reads. They have charts. All right. You still want to do good. We can do good reads in, in a sec, right? But like, let's go a little like, okay, so we got YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, the most popular social media channels, which are globally available. All right. We got a couple of international students. Um, and we may have like people who hang out on platforms, which are like not mainstream. So give me some names about like similar things happening on other platforms where you were watching other people or you have a live chat. And I'm not sure it exists, right? But it's always worth like thinking a little left and right because Twitch is the most obvious thing, but they may be protective, right? We had trouble scraping it, but there may be these little niche platforms where you can actually get way more data. You know, for example, some platforms in, in, in other countries are way less, um, way less, yeah, Twitter, obviously. Yeah, it's still the big platforms, right? But you wanna, you wanna go a little, you know, look a little left and right here. Okay. 
Um, cool. So that's, yeah, but okay. So maybe another like thing on, on Twitch is like, why is it new or interesting? Like, so, you know, when you pick that, maybe you can be a little convincing about it, right? So, okay, it's, 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 not, it's not linear TV where uh, people, um, uh, people can't uh, interact, right? Um, it's not like YouTube 10 years ago where there was no chat and interaction. So actually here we have live interaction. Actually something that sparks my interest right now is to think about uh, live interaction. Like when I grew up, right, you had linear TV and there was no interaction. And then came, you know, interactive TV people, uh, sorry, like regular TV looking at a Twitter feed. Um, and then they were, you know, doing something, but there was no real interaction. I think the really interesting thing is that, and I think I, I want to make this bold, is that uh, consumers influence on what happens on the show. Um, yeah. So rather than saying, how do consumers react to ads? That's like from the streamer to the consumers, we can turn it around and just say like, you know, how do consumers actually influence on what's on the show? Okay, on TikTok, by the way, yeah. We'll, we'll put that up there too. On Reddit, there's no live interaction now. Um, but, you know, in looking for this, try to identify multiple stakeholders and how they influence each other. It's not all, all, uh, only the most obvious relationship that you should zoom in, but like, you know, think a little bigger here. Um, oh, you have live streams on Reddit, I didn't know. Yeah, Reddit is very scraping friendly. All right, so about which audience are we interested on Reddit? Okay, by the way, the theme here we could make could be traditional innovative ways of advertisement. That could be a theme, but it could, could also be how do consumers influence uh, streamers, like turning it around. I don't know what the theme could be. Um, depends on what, yeah. So, I mean, this is just like one example in which I'm trying to, you know, work with something that you guys find interesting and then trying to look around just a little bit, right? What are like interesting things that are happening and that are going on? Let's try with something else and let's try a societal question right here. What in your opinion are societal issues that you wanna address or get data on? Like what gets people on the streets? What is that you guys are worrying uh, about? Give me some issues. What do you think is important? Anti-vexers, right? Let's just gather some topics, okay? Let's do, okay, topics. Let's do stakeholders. We got consumers, we got companies, we got um, politics. Yeah, that's an interesting one. All right, so here's the thing about this abortion. I don't know, can you summarize what happened this trip? Um, yeah, so basically they made it illegal to get an abortion after six weeks where a lot of women, uh, even if they uh, got the pregnancy for other reasons than just unprotected sex, uh, it, it's too early so they cannot have an abortion and uh, they will get serious uh, punishment if they do. I understand, I understand. Um, thanks for the summary. So. Here we can actually zoom in much more. It's not consumers. It's it's actually okay. The 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 the, the affected population, which are you know uh, pregnant women. Um, um, politics, right versus left, maybe, and how they react. How could it affect companies? Which companies? You know, it could be how companies react to it. Some companies are more political than others. Maybe this is not consumers. Let's do this, the, the, the public reaction to policy. 
who is affected by this? I'm trying to build like a list on like relevant, like, you know, if you want to study this law and, and how, what it did, we need to think about like, whom does it affect? And if we want to study that behavior more, yeah, pregnant women are one, but um, I don't know, do we have organizations? You got probably um, pro-abortion organizations. You have um, against uh, abortion uh, organizations. So probably that's the Catholic Church, right? Um, which has been known for this. Um, maybe church uh, communities. We don't even need to classify this as like, like maybe type, supportive or not, but um, potential organizations. Give me some more organizations. Who does something? Supportive communities maybe. Are there like any community, how companies influence the climate debate? Okay, you wanna to go to climate and I'll do climate in a bit, but what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to broaden that context a little bit, right? Because you just think about this one keyword, but I'm trying to teach you a little bit of how to, how to broaden it up because if you're just like scraping Twitter on like hashtag abortion, it's probably not the most unique data that you're getting, right? So let's think about it and try to, you know, identify like, were there like interesting stuff happening so that you can start, um, um, yeah, uh, start, start getting some data? Okay, but, um, activism maybe that's something, right? So like new initiatives of pro or against charities. Um, the organizations that are formed. Okay, now let's think about. support let's do a supportive or related uh, community so i mean something i was thinking about is that in poland there was a, a similar situation i'm not sure what that state is but sometimes in like you know such things different communities especially because we are on the web kind of connect to each other and and try to support each other or try to give suggestions to each other so you know we can learn from that Okay, and finally, can you come up with ways in which marketing has an influence on that debate, right? So this thing has now happened. Is there anything in the way like organizations reach out to their fellows? So suppose... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what this marketing boycott. Yeah, okay, marketing perspective. Um, let me do this. Um, uh, boycott, uh, boycott um, uh, politicians. Uh, yeah, uh, but I'm thinking about like, I'm thinking, yeah, how do, how do firms, because marketing happens in firms and organizations, how have they how have they used marketing tools to either support or or not support what's going on right here so boycott is one way um, but maybe maybe they're paid promotions and ads which brings me like to um, Facebook ads um, archive campaigns so there's a website which gives you access to all of the ads that are given on Facebook. Um, and they have an API even. Um, so you can go to US, for example, uh, and uh, the category is, let's do all, let's do all and search for abortion. So here we go, right? You get a full categorization of all the ads and even the spending of, well, I'm not sure this is the archive of ads actually, but you know, check it out because now we got the first thing that you know, could potentially relate this to marketing. I know for a fact that Facebook political campaign archive 
that they're required. Yeah, it's the ads library, right? Yeah. So they're legally required to disclose what ads are shown on the platform and how much spending there is behind. So finally we get something. So try to see a relationship between the advertisements on the Facebook platforms, Instagram and Facebook to all the things that go on, you know? So it's not only maybe collecting a data set on um, Twitter and the hashtag abortion, but at the same time, monitoring on what firms do to support or not support what's going on in Texas. Right? So we're trying to broaden that context. So potential outlets to scrape that are interesting are the Facebook ads archive. Um, it is a Twitter, hashtag abortion, hashtag Texas. I don't know what those hashtags are. Now you bring on this uh, discussion a little more. So what are other potential outlets about this? I could imagine that you could look at websites, for example, um, yeah, and I don't know the example website right now, but um, uh, okay, abortion, Texas, um, let me just look at, this is, abortion clinics you could look at well I, I don't find a good website all I wanted to say is well maybe you can give me um, maybe you can give me some some things where this is debated or where this where this is where this is um, let me see oh, can I come up with a way um, to have a good example oh changes. Changes on Wikipedia, maybe or something. What I wanted to show you is archive.org. So suppose there's like a website on um, an abortion clinic in Texas. Oh, by the way, it's Google ads. It's like what ads show up when you search for abortion clinic. That's another thing that, You know, is it going up or going back? So I'm trying to like get a broad overview about potential things where like data sits around. And what I wanted to show you is archive.org where you can go back in time about how websites look. So let me go, you know, Texas uh, politics, just go to this, uh, the Texas, well, this is a newspaper. Well, what was on the newspaper? How did newspapers report about this? And you can go to archive.org go through this website and actually see that this website has been making like historical snapshots the, like archive.org takes historical snapshots of websites on the internet so you can use one website and go back in history and i'm putting it down here as like you know, use archive.org so there are a zillion of ways in which you can broaden up your research idea and one way to think about this is like, who are the stakeholders of your societal question? Um, Lyft and Uber, that's an interesting one. Um, Lyft, Uber, news media coverage. Um, something if you're interested in, in, let's say the societal context is to look at um, the Journal of Marketing and there's a really good article on it. Let me see, um, Journal of uh, Marketing website. Because the Journal of Marketing just recently had an issue on um, marketing for a better world, um, special issue marketing for a better world. And the article that you guys should all read if you're interested in like, better world issues and how they relate to marketing i'll paste it to the chat is this thing where um the editors of the of this issue give like really good um ideas on how to bring in societal issues into marketing and it's giving you a lot of inspiration on how um on how you could potentially you know bring in these societal issues into marketing to study them all right so Like this, you can um, you can start generating your um, research ideas. Um, maybe we just note down a list of other platforms and ideas 
um, that you're interested in right now so that we can use this uh, later on for group formation, right? So I think, um, yeah, you can actually give that list right now. So are there any other things that you want to note? Because you maybe you want to gather some people who work with you on these issues? Otherwise, I leave it also up to you. Um, let me just like look at look at this um, for a while. Um, what else we need to do on this? Da, 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 da. Yeah, I haven't seen so much about cool business ideas yet. So um, maybe some others have some opinions on this. Um, no, I think that's it on this. Okay, let me see what else I wanted to do. Go to modules. Yeah, I mean, the way the way I would suggest this to go is that you start looking for classmates who are interested in similar stuff, right? Be it a societal, a business, um, or like one of those trendy questions and, and start the group formation process. And on Canvas, you can start allocating yourself to teams, but um, maybe a good way is uh, to start a list with potential topics or platforms to scrape use APIs um, for you to uh, you know reach out to, to, to each other. But once again, I think I better leave that choice uh, to you on how to go about this, unless you have a better opinion for me on how to organize this. All right. What we've done today is that I showed you with a couple of examples on how you can start trying to get some data from websites. It works very well with the examples that we picked. It worked a little less <laughs> with uh, the sites that you suggested, but I'll deliver on, on having good examples ready so that it actually works and explaining those to, to you in separate YouTube videos. Um, and the other thing that I try to um, help you with is to think a little broader about um, the context, right? And I think the most um, important takeaway is that um, you know, you think Twitch is the most natural resource to go to, but there are alternative platforms that you could take. Um, so it makes sense broadening your perspective a little bit, looking more at niche content, maybe you can get other data. And then the other tool that I gave you is to think more carefully about certain stakeholders and where they hang out and what you could potentially do with it. Um, and maybe the last thing that, um, I want to I want to quickly discuss is the, the type of data or the type of data source, which can be API or web data. And the type of um, data we could like imagine going back in time using archive.org could be data which is historically available on a website or data that we would we would have to scrape live. Um, Um, that's maybe the type of data um, that we can get. And then type of variables, which uh, I started um, brainstorming a bit about um, this Twitch topic up here, right? So that's a little how, I, how I'd like you to, to move this ahead. How is the course gonna uh, continue? Uh, well, next week um, you will go through the Web Scraping 101 tutorial. So it's actually zooming in in detail on how to conduct web scraping, actually retrieve data from the web. Um, you'll finalize teams and you can uh, allocate these options and show me those options on Canvas. And there is going to be um, a second team activity. I'll walk you through the tutorial and we're going to work on the team activity. And actually, you have to work on um, presentations, team presentations, three minutes per team plus two minutes discussion. Um, and all the details are um, up here. So what I want is a motivation for the data context and why it's important. The summary of the data sources that you explored and the motivation for what website or API you ultimately want to get. All right, so that's a bit how this is going to go. Did I miss anything from the chat? Sorry that I couldn't zoom in on climate, but I think climate should be a topic. I'd love to see more on this and have access or vaccination, you know, 
pro or against. This is interesting. What I think is interesting too is pricing from Corona tests. I don't have a clue about, you know, I mean, what is an optimal price? Maybe the 750 is not an optimal price because many people complain about it. I know that's an interesting context. The Corona dashboard from the government is something extremely cool to take a look at and how it relates to, I don't know, what goes on on the streets. Um, and probably you can also go back in time. Uh, yeah. So I'm done for today's session. And I also want to give you a little break for deep prep. So um, I'd say stick around for questions if you have them. And um, I'll stick around at least for another five minutes for questions. But I'll close the recording. Thanks a bunch for being there this morning. I hope you find it useful.